You're listening to Civic Media. Stay up to date on the latest news and information for your local community and Wisconsin by signing up for our free email newsletter. Visit civicmedia.us slash email to get started. This is your WISS Daily News Roundup for Oshkosh Air Support, 98.3 FM and 1100 AM. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Local governments around Wisconsin are getting $1.5 billion in shared revenue from the state. Nearly $300 million of that is coming from the new shared revenue formula put in place last year. Another $10 million is coming from Wisconsin's new tax on cable TV. Some of the new shared revenue dollars are earmarked for first responders. Efforts to protect the Mississippi River Basin from farm runoff have largely failed. Misa Khan is the former policy director for the Mississippi River Network. She says there needs to be more collaboration between states. The way that we operate right now is very much a state-by-state kind of choose-your-own-adventure. As much as 80% of the nitrogen flowing down the Mississippi comes from farms and livestock operations. Donald Trump has claimed the Biden-Harris administration let more than 400,000 convicted criminals into the U.S. But is that true? Here's Trisha Young. In Prairie du Chien, Donald Trump claimed Kamala Harris let in over 425,000 convicted criminals. However, ICE says that figure covers non-citizens convicted of crimes over the past 40 years, both before and after entering the U.S. Most of these individuals entered before the Biden administration. Research shows undocumented immigrants are not more likely than native-born Americans to commit crimes. I'm Trisha Young for Wisconsin Watch. Wisconsin prisons are no longer accepting donations of used books. That's because secondhand books are used to smuggle drugs behind bars. The move has its critics. A nonprofit called Wisconsin Books to Prisoners says the decision limits inmates' access to information and does nothing about other ways prisoners get a hold of drugs. Candlelight hikes return to Wisconsin state parks for four weeks starting this weekend. Most events include pumpkin carving, campfires, and more. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Here's what you need to know closer to home. For WISS News, I'm Lisa Hale. Tim Waltz, the Democratic candidate for vice president, will make his first campaign appearance in Northeast Wisconsin Monday. Reports say he'll visit Eau Claire in the morning and Green Bay in the afternoon. Details have not yet been released. This is Waltz's fifth campaign visit to the state and his first to the region. His running mate, Kamala Harris, was in Ripon recently. On the Republican side, Donald Trump appeared in Green Bay in April and J.D. Vance was in De Pere in August. An Oshkosh Common Council member wants better communication with residents and businesses about a revaluation of the city's property values, especially since this is the second revaluation required by the state. Jacob Flom. Um, because there's a lot of hearsay moving around, there's a lot of people who may have some of the story, may not have all the story, may be a little bit confused about why we have to revalue again. I really would like to see that laid out very clearly to the public and all those questions being answered because um, people are frankly not going to be happy. The Common Council will vote on a contract for revaluation services at a future meeting. The Oshkosh Area School District is considering a $195 million referendum to the ballot in April. Superintendent Dr. Brian Davis told the school board that he's encouraged by the feedback he's gotten so far. Community members are encouraged to join us at upcoming sessions uh, to share their thoughts and help shape the future of education across our community. Community feedback sessions will be Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. at Menominee Elementary and Thursday morning at 7.30 at the Oshkosh Downtown YMCA. Four Wisconsin school districts, including one from the Fox Valley and one from central Wisconsin, are facing federal civil rights complaints from LGBTQ plus advocacy groups. Winnicani Community School District and the School District of Abbotsford are accused of violating Title IX and fostering hostile environments for transgender and non-binary students. The complaints filed by Fair Wisconsin and GSAFE target districts that have eliminated or excluded gender identity from their anti-discrimination policies. 
People from Northeast Wisconsin can visit the Vietnam Memorial without leaving the Fox Valley, or at least they can visit an 80% replica of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. The traveling wall will be at the Sunnyview Expo Center through noon on Sunday. American Legion Squadron 70 is sponsoring the visit. The wall arrived in Oshkosh, escorted by American Legion riders, local police and fire departments, and a Vietnam-era helicopter. While visiting the wall is free, the American Legion Squadron is still fundraising to cover the cost of bringing it to New Wisco. Seven community projects in Northeast Wisconsin will receive funding from the non-state grant program managed by the State Building Commission. Projects funded are the reconstruction of the Eagle Bluff Lighthouse Barn in Door County, a renovation of the Bergstrom Mahler Museum of Glass, the Green Bay Public Market, Menominee U Waskegon Language Center, the Appleton Public Library, the Boys and Girls Club of the Tri-County area will get some money to build a new site in Ripon, and Outagamie County will get $2 million for the expansion of the concourse at Appleton International Airport. All told, the seven projects will bring in about $5 million to the area. Being of service is very important to Green Bay real estate agent Mike Pritzel. He'll be of service over the next two weeks as he heads to Florida to help with Hurricane Milton disaster relief. I've got time. It just feels right, and um, I'm going to do it. That's really the gist of why I do a lot of things in my life. Uh, We should help because we can While he has helped with disaster relief in the Red Cross locally for fires, this will be Pritzel's first out-of-state deployment. Find out ways you can help by visiting our hurricane help page at civicmedia.us slash help. And that's what you need to know. I'm Lisa Hale, WISS News. The Bucks and the Lakers put on a show. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with Sports NBA. It was just a preseason game, but the Bucks and the Lakers faced off in Pfizer form. Giannis against LeBron. Giannis with 20 points in 20 minutes of playing time. Bucks head coach Doc Rivers. Giannis got out running, and then every, the starters came back in and kept playing well. You need that sometimes, and I, I thought that happened. You know, I love how we play Bobby. Like, he knows it. Coming in, Vinny Johnson or whoever else you want to name, the other great guys coming off the bench that we're going to you. You know, be responsible with it. He made a couple of good passes, too. Uh, but we want him to be aggressive. The Lakers held on to win 107-102. to NFL, the Packers had to place tight end Luke Musgrave to IR due to a lingering ankle injury. The team signed Falcons tight end John Fitzpatrick off Atlanta's practice squad. College football, the Badgers play Rutgers tomorrow in New Jersey at 11 a.m. Head coach Luke Fickle says the younger players now will bode well for the future. This is what it takes to continue to build a program. You know, it doesn't always happen that way. Guys go down and guys don't take advantage of their opportunities. So there's some really good situations for young guys. I think that'll that'll bode really well for us in the, the stretch. That's the Badgers head coach, Luke Fickle. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. There are no anticipated mega blockbusters opening this weekend, but there are some solid, well-reviewed films coming to the big screen. For your holiday horror pleasure, leading the way is the third installment in the Terrifier franchise. Terrifier 3 follows the survivors of a Halloween massacre by Art the Clown in Terrifier 2. The film is pulling in 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. For some good family fare, check out Piece by Piece, which tells the story of musical artist Farrell Williams' life using Lego animation. The film is directed by Won't You Be My Neighbor's Morgan Neville, and it's pulling in 88% on Rotten Tomatoes. And for those of you interested in the -the behind-the-scenes drama leading up to the first ever episode of Saturday Night Live back in 1975, it's Saturday Night, which offers an appearance by Wisconsin's own Willem Dafoe. Saturday Night is currently rating a 79% on Rotten Tomatoes. Let's go to the movies. Guy Ritchie is attempting to line up some heavy hitters for his new project. The director of films like Snatch and Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels is in talks with Pierce Brosnan, Helen Mirren, and Tom Hardy to star in his new series for Paramount+, Plus, tentatively called Guy Ritchie's The Associate. Deadline.com reports that the hour-long drama will tell the story of two generations of gangsters in the UK. There is no release date yet set. Martin Scorsese is getting on in years and makes very long films. The 81-year-old director has been in this racket for 60 years and says he has no intention of slowing down. Deadline reports that Scorsese has put his project about Frank Sinatra on hold while he works on a movie about Jesus. The director says he was inspired to tell the story of Jesus after meeting the Pope at Vatican City last year. He says he is hoping God gives him strength to finish both films. It's been 30 years since the film Speed was released. In honor of the milestone, Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock 
Bullock reunited in Los Angeles at the Egyptian Theater for an anniversary screening. The film made Bullock a star. She was joined after the screening by Reeves for a Q&A. Reeves talked about working with Dennis Hopper and of the professionalism shown by Jeff Daniels and at one point said, We knew we were making something wacky. I guess that means he's proud of the film. If you're feeling nostalgic and aren't into Halloween movies, check out the re-release of The Nightmare Before Christmas, which actually might remind you of Halloween. The film hits theaters this weekend for a limited run. The Tim Burton film was originally released in 1993. The stop animation film will be playing on over a thousand screens across America this weekend. The film received a 95% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes and a 92% with audiences. For more showbiz fun, tune into Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. One more fairly warm day today, and then fall is going to kick in in a very big way here over the weekend. A little breezy, partly cloudy, 76 today, tonight 43, tomorrow mostly cloudy, 61. By Sunday, scattered showers with a high in the mid to upper 50s. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Outside now, it's 55. That's your WISS Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at WISS.FM. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about. 